Hey, welcome back to Turntable Guy. Yeah, it's been a little bit of time since I've uh, put out a video. Um, things have slowed down a little bit here. I have done a few repairs on the side, but uh, nothing really worth uh, videoing. Um, but I always seem to come back to these silly CD players. But uh, this one's not just a player, it's a recorder. I found this one last week at the local Goodwill. Walked in, checked the electronics section, and uh, there she was sitting on the uh, on the shelf. Price tag ten dollars and ninety nine cents. Um, I also noticed that it was pretty busy in the store, and I guess it's the last Friday of the month, so uh, everything in the store is half off. So when I got up to the cash, I had no idea it was uh, fifty percent off. Uh, it was like five bucks and a little bit more. So for under six bucks, I got pretty much. Um, what looks like a brand new uh, CD recorder. Now, do I need this? Absolutely not. Uh, I have tape decks, I've got uh, mini disc recorders, and now I've got a CD recorder. Do I make recordings of anything anymore? Nope. Um, but I do uh, uh, play keyboards and so forth, and uh, if you check out my other channel, Electone Guy, I've got some videos on there. Uh, I, I need a good way to record audio from my keyboards and you know, last time I did it direct to the mini disc which turned out pretty good uh, but uh, this is a lot uh, easier and I can move this one around my mini disc is in uh, one of my systems so it's a little bit harder I have to run a cable there so this is the TAC CD RW 890 this is the mark 1 uh, there was a mark 2 that came out and uh, the performance is identical the only difference was it had something to do with uh, CD labeling uh, with uh, uh, doing the tracks. I guess you could do them individually or something like that. I think that's the only difference between the two. Um, again, this one was just a little bit over five bucks and um, I had no way of checking it in the store for recordability other than uh, just putting a CD player in it and see if it, it played, and it did. So um, pretty standard CD player. Again, no remote, but uh, you know, it does work. Um, TAC, you know, slash Tascam is known for uh, their recording equipment. Um, Tascam's more the professional model. Um, this one's made in China. Um, build quality is really good though. It's got a Sony um, drive in it. We're going to open up the top and we'll have a peek inside. But um, you know, everything's working good. And uh, I guess we'll, we'll try making a recording too a little bit later on. But uh, uh, let's uh, get into the normal mount here, uh, mount the camera up, up above. Uh, we'll take the lid off and have a peek inside. Uh, one of the other reasons I haven't uh, put out a video in about a month or so is it's been extremely wet here um, in southwestern Ontario. We've got just a ton of rain. Um, the rivers are uh, overflowing their banks. It's, uh, it's been very, very wet. And uh, the room that I, um, my workshop here, um, my sump pump sits in there. If you, probably seen some of my other videos where the thing's going off um, it has been so loud I just I just can't record in here so um, I get this uh, horrible dripping sound that uh, some people have said make them want to go to the bathroom while they're watching the video so anyway that's uh, today I've been able to I still got a drip going on back there you can't hear it because I put a piece of wood underneath the uh, the big O so that uh, it kind of dulls the sound so anyway uh, that's another reason that uh, videos have been scarce lately. But okay, back to the uh, TAC. So if you remove the screws and uh, that is the interior of it. Uh, I'm pretty impressed with the build quality. Oops, sorry. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here. Um, really big, beefy transformer for this CD player. I better unplug that or I'm going to get a shock. Um, really beefy. Look at the size of this transformer. Very impressed. Usually in a CD player um, you see a transformer about this big or nothing at all. Oh, there's the uh, phone call. And um, as I said before, we've got a Sony uh, DVD drive here. Um, it's a SATA drive, so you could basically take this and pop it in your computer and you've got a DVD, uh, or not DVD, but uh, actually it is a DVD burner. It says DVD CD rewritable drive. So obviously they're not using the DVD section of it. 
that's interesting. This is, uh, is this made in Japan? Well, there we go. Manufacture date on this is uh, December 2011. So, yeah, so you can pull this out and you can throw this in your computer. Um, you can see the, uh, the SATA cable here and just your standard Molex connector here. Um, yeah, nothing, nothing particularly special about that. Uh, you know, it's, it's enclosed, which means there's less chance that the uh, laser is going to get dirty. Uh, over here, we've got our power supply section. Uh, and uh, front here we've got uh, this is a head, little headphone amplifier here which is kind of nice so you can actually um, uh, monitor your recordings as they're going on uh, so if you don't have uh, you know if this is if if you didn't have the headphone uh, connector you'd have to use a stereo or something to, to listen to it so this can be as like a standalone unit you've got uh, monitoring here which is really nice um, all the cables on it uh, have ferrite beads so they're really even the power cable, they're looking to uh, reduce electromagnetic interference as much as possible, or radio interference. So um, I'm, I'm really impressed with the build quality. So like I said, power supply, uh, probably audio, all, audio output back here, and uh, this is our uh, main board. So it's a tiny little board, it's a daughter board on top of the motherboard here, uh, that takes care of all the processing. And that is basically the guts of the uh, of the player. Uh, on the back side of the unit, we've got an optical input. So you get your digital input. Uh, it does allow for CD to CD burning. So you can make uh, perfect copies of a CD if you wanted to. Uh, but you can, as far as I know, there's a there's DRM um, on it, so you can only make one copy. Uh, so it'll put probably put some kind of code on it. So when you go to copy it again, it won't let you from the, the, the copy, right? So you can always copy the original as many times as you want. But if you try to make a copy of the copy, it won't let you. You got analog inputs, analog outputs. I'm surprised there's no digital output. That would have been nice. So you could use your own DAC. But uh, not on this one. And I'm not sure what kind of DAC is on this thing. or if it's underneath here. All right, so that's the, uh, the interior of the player. So uh, one thing I wanted to mention is uh, I did mention it was made in China and uh, the build quality is excellent, okay? Everything is just super. Uh, but one of the things you'll notice from a product, you know, that's uh, from a Japanese company that's built in Japan is that, or built in China, is that they will use Chinese parts so all of these capacitors on here are United brand and not United Chemicon. Okay, this is some kind of Chinese capacitor. Now I've uh, checked some of these, they all measure good. Okay, uh, so maybe they are decent quality, but you know, if you, uh, for longevity's sake, um, if this is something that you wanted to keep for a long time, I'd be yanking all these and replacing them with uh, quality Japanese caps. But am I gonna do that? Absolutely not. I'm not going to waste the time uh, or the effort to do that. Probably not going to use this all that much. And I'm suspecting that uh, they have been perfectly fine for the last, you know, 12 years. So I'm leaving them alone. So that's that's the interior. And uh, what we'll do now, you know, let's have a look at the front faceplate while we we're right here. Um, I don't have the remote, obviously. No one ever brings the remotes to these uh, places when they uh, drop them off. I mean, I got lucky once. Um, with a Optimus CD player. Um, what do you have here? You got your drawer, open, close, all your regular uh, controls here. Um, this is obviously different. You got a record button here. You have record level for your analog inputs. Um, this is just a fast forward and rewind kind of thing. Uh, here's your erase, finalize. Um, and this is, has to do with the syncing, um, auto and manual. And here's your input select button and your uh, headphone jack with uh, a nice volume control so it has an actual little amplifier in there which is really nice so um, okay I'm gonna oh, I won't button it back up I'm gonna bring you back down and uh, we'll try to make a recording okay I'm all set up here um, we're gonna do a recording turn our unit on it's gonna look for a disc please excuse the handheld stuff sorry I don't have a good mount for 
frontal vision here. Open her up. Um, we're going to use a uh, CDRW for this. Um, you can use CDRs or CDRWs. This is a, uh, a new old stock verbatim CDRW. It's brand new. So you don't need uh, audio specific discs to run this. Okay, so it has recognized it as a blank disk. We'll use um, something from the YouTube uh, library so we don't get uh, any copyright strikes here. This one's called Jane Street by Track Tribe. So um, you're going to want to hit record. It goes into pause mode, and uh, we selected. Anal oh, no, it's on digital, so we need to select analog, which is right there. So input select, go analog in, we'll hit our record, which puts it into pause mode. So it says it's waiting. So you can, you can set your levels here. So if I go up, we're going to hit play here. Okay, so our music started. It just just like a cassette deck you can set your record level here but with digital you want to make sure like an analog you know depending on the type of tape you're using you can go plus two plus four with a metal tape you can even go higher oh see that's that's bad you do not want red in digital Okay, let's let's go with that. Okay, we'll start it over. We'll hit record. Actually, hit play to start it. And off she goes. You can hear it starting. Okay, that's enough. Okay, so once your recording is done, you can stop or pause or whatever you want. We'll stop here. So it's going to uh, write that track. It's pretty quick. I'm not sure what kind of buffer it has in it, but uh, it's recorded. So we can press play now and let's hear what it sounds like. My goodness, it sounds just like the original. So, uh, in the manual, it states that uh, it will take a 44, 48, or 32 uh, bit input signal and automatically convert it to 44.1 kilohertz. 16 bit. Did I say bit? I meant 44 kilohertz, 48 kilohertz, or 32 kilohertz input signal. And uh, oh, that's the end of our track. And uh, automatically convert everything to 16 bit, 44 kilohertz. So right down to normal Redbook CD quality. So um, yeah, I thought that sounded fantastic. Um, I couldn't hear any difference between the original. Uh, these did not really catch on uh, which is a bit of a shame but I mean once 
you were able to rip CDs with your computer, these kind of became, I don't know, useless in a way. I, I'm not sure. I, or how many people were really making mi mixed CDs? I wanted to say mixtape uh, with a CD recorder like this. It's definitely a niche product, uh, but I think it's kind of cool. So anyway, so when you inject it with a CDRW, it just spits it out. So I can keep adding to this track. Freaking phone this morning. I can keep adding to this track, to the CD as much as I want. And then when I'm done, I would finalize it. Uh, you remember that from your CD burning days? Um, with a CDR, it's a little different. Obviously, you can't re-record it. But again, you can keep adding to it. And then when you're done, you finalize it. And then it'll work in any CD player. So... That's it. That's the uh, TIAC CD RW 890 uh, relic from the past, a dead technology, something that uh, we really don't see anymore, but uh, kind of hard not to bring home um, for what I thought was $11 and turned out to be half of that. So anyway, guys, I'm hoping that uh, the turntable repairs will pick up again soon. Um, and I can start uh, posting uh, the most important thing we do on this channel, which is turntables. So in the meantime, I wish everyone a happy Easter, and we'll see you in the next video.